Okay, so we have a question here. Uh, cliff jumping here in BC, great uh, doing some jumps. Um, we are given the function uh, there, and that should be a squared, and uh, where time is in seconds and height is in meters. Okay, so what I would do first here is I would go to Desmos and I would enter in that uh, describing function. And then to show our work and our thought process and also help us out with our thought process, uh, drawing a quick diagram of what we find in Desmos. And we may see that it looks something like that. Uh, it looks like the vertex isn't quite on the y-axis, just a little bit over there and intercepts here and a couple intersections down here. Um, we can jot in that that's about 1.4, it's just to the right of that and just to the left of about 1.5 there. And so let's let's carry on with our question here. I guess what we could do is let's just identify, make sure we're perfectly clear. The x-axis in this case is our time, and that's in seconds. The y-axis, that's our height, and that's in meters. So even the process of jotting some of this down um, will quite often help us out in clarifying exactly what this is looking like and what's going on here. So uh, for part A, we're asked, how high is the cliff? So thinking this through, when, when is this, where on this graph is he standing on the cliff itself? Well, that happens when time is zero, just before he jumps. And so we'll just draw that in there. And that's in fact the y-intercept at that point. So if we were to describe our work um, from the graph, we could just say at t equals zero, um, we have our y-intercept. And our y-intercept we can identify off that graph as uh, y, or height probably is better, height is equal to 10 meters. Now an algebraic way to do it, um, or to double check yourself, is you could say what is the height when the time is zero? And so what we would do is we just plug in t is zero into that equation, and Writing it out is probably the most difficult part because once we actually do the work for the equation, we know that anything times zero is zero. So both of those terms are gone and all we're left with is that 10 at the end or 10 meters. So two ways for us to look at it and justify that yes, in fact, um, 10 meters is the height of that cliff and when time equals zero, that's where our cliff jumper begins. All right, so let's go on to B. Uh, what is the highest point reached? Okay, so as we talked about, they're starting right on the cliff at 10 meters, and then they're jumping. Now, it looks like they're jumping up, so they're trying to do something fancy here, um, and so they're jumping up as they go out, and so this point here is our vertex, and that identifies the point at which uh, this cliff diver has reached their maximum. So, um, so we could just justify our work here, um, vertex. And so the vertex from our graph is 0 0.05. And we have 10. 0.012, and that's just taking it from our graph in Desmos. And so let's analyze what this means. That's saying that when the time is a half or uh, five one hundredths of a second, um, so just after they jump out, he reaches that maximum height of 10.012, so just a little bit above the uh, edge of the cliff. And that is the maximum. So the maximum height, so h max, we could say, is equal to 10.012 meters. All right? And of course, if you wanted to, you could plug that 0 0.05 into the original equation and double check that that's what you get for an h. Um, but carrying on here. So on to part c. How many seconds until he hits the water? 
Okay, so let's look further at this graph. So we know what's going on. He leaves the, the cliff, he goes up, and then of course, gravity, he's starting to travel further and further until he hits the water, and so splash down here. So the hitting the water is our x-intercept down here. And so you may stop and say, well, what about this x-intercept over here? And it's true, that is another x-intercept. Um, and if time could go in a negative direction, perhaps we could look at, and also they could travel through a cliff, um, we could look at this, uh, this uh, intersect over here. But in fact, it is quite meaningless in the real world. In other words, um, it's a mathematical model of what's going on. But in our case, the model only makes sense as t is greater than zero. So we're really only interested in this side here. The model takes us out here, and um, we can take a look at that and, and stop and say, yeah, okay, I get that that's the continuation of the model, but in fact, it doesn't make sense in reality, so we will just focus on the time is equal or greater than zero. All right, so that being out of the way, uh, we go to C, and we're interested in that x-intercept. And so we would say x-intercept, and we could also say that we understand as long as x-intercept when time is equal or greater than zero. And so uh, we can take that from the graph in Desmos, and we can identify that as 1.4 six, five seconds. And so there we are, we have our three answers there and a full interpretation of our graph, all done.